what's happening just making dreams so I wanted to give you an idea of what one of the very few places I know uh, this is one of two in all the different states that I've been in on a legal road in which you can travel and you will go through a water source at four different occasions on this particular stretch of road. This is Fish and Creek Hollow Road in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I will just forewarn you, don't get yourself caught off the road or down here doing things that you shouldn't. Um, they do watch it. I personally, uh, 12 years ago, actually got stuck over there in that creek. And uh, being a smart butt that I was, um, multiple people stopped and kind of asked if I needed help and I, I didn't really respond correctly. I was like, well, does it look like I need help? And it wasn't too long later the game warden came and he actually gave me a fine um, for water pollution that destruction or whatever not but here it is so there's the trick go on this bridge but i would highly not recommend driving up it um 16 year olds uh i've been there done it same thing with that there i wanted to uh, recommend going up over that but a lot of people come down here in the summertime and uh you know have picnics and let their kids swim in the creek and there's fisher fishermen and people that just come down here to enjoy nature it gets really pretty in here when the leaves start coming back and uh it's one of uh, my favorite places in Lancaster County to go one of the few places you can still go and have limited to no service which you know there's a love-hate relationship there uh, so, you know, if you would need to, and there's a car coming the other way, I suppose you could maybe go through them puddles. And, you know, I'm not saying we haven't done that a time or two or hundred, <laughs> but, um, yeah, essentially throughout this journey, it's just a nice, this is now a clay packed road, I would call it. And, uh, you have a good chance of seeing some wildlife in here. You have a nice creek that you either follow along throughout the entire road or you cross over it, like I said, four times. So I started this video about two miles deep into this road um, where I knew the first crossing was gonna occur and then it seems about every three quarters of a mile or so you hit another crossing. So we'll be coming up another one that will be going left over, if I recall correctly, and then the road shoots back right. Um, so, yeah, if you're ever in Lancaster County looking for a place to have a chill picnic, um, this could be it. So, Fishing Creek Hollow Road, this is in southern Lancaster County, and um, it can already be overfilled enough, but I uh, figured as I'm down here and there are people at the house hopefully uh, liking everything that they see, I would take you guys on a journey and this might be my last journey on Fishing Creek Hollow Road in, in an undetermined amount of time. So what better way to share it but with you guys. So this is also another really cool fact about this creek. Uh, you can find up to half inch nuggets of gold in this, placer gold, um, back from Glacier Runoff, you know, however many years ago, but this is a documented um, gold stream. So you can, if you know, you're in Pennsylvania and you want to go placer gold mining, I have done it a few times in here. Uh, personally, never really had any success, but I'm not any gold miner by any stretch. But any of you uh, gold mining prospectors, uh, ah, yeah, that want to give a go at it, this is a registered gold creek, and the best or the most gold uh, that has been found in Lancaster County would be out of Peters Creek, 
and Peters Creek is not too far away. I've also attempted to uh, mine there. The, they were the first two places I ever really attempted to gold mine, along with Silver Mine Park. Um, and more of a hobbyist, just kind of getting a pan wet and putting some material through it. The most I've ever retrieved was uh, black sand, but uh, you know, I, I, I'm still living and I fully intend to have my gold pans with me on my journey. It's one of the skills that I hope to um, hone while I'm out and about and have the opportunity. I definitely want to get my neck at gold panning. I've actually told many people for the last decade that if I ever have to go work for somebody else, um, my very first choice would be able to go work on a gold mine and yeah, get that experience. Back in 2005, um, I had the privilege of at 15 turning 16, mind you, my parents uh, also had the courage to just let me hop on a plane. I boarded plane in, I believe it was Philadelphia, maybe Harrisburg. Flew to Chicago where I had a layaway and then I went to Oklahoma and I had participated from Oklahoma up through Kansas, Nebraska, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, and actually cutting wheat into Canada throughout a field in Montana. That's how close, well, we were on the line. Uh, there was a street sign actually that we were crossing throughout this one field. And on, on the one side, it said USA. And on the following side, it said Canada. Um, as a 16 year old at that particular point, I thought it was the coolest thing to um, just, yeah, be crossing the line. There was no border, gate, fence, patrol, or no one along that line. It was, you know, out in the, the top of Montana. Um, if I remember right, oh, if I remember right, I honestly can't remember. We were up past um, Great Falls, Montana by about six hours, and I think the name Sun, Sunbury, Montana might have actually been it. But um, we also had the experience while we were waiting on the wheat to dry. I could, uh, we had about two and a half weeks because wheat is dependent on the weather. So you can only cut it when it has a moisture content, ideally of less than 10%. Um, but it was acceptable if it was in between 10 and 14%. I remember we showed up um, in Montana and we tested the wheat and the moisture content was like in the 40s. So we had weeks before we were gonna be able to process the sweet through the combines. So our boss, Randy Ettinger, Ettinger Harvesting, um, he was an awesome guy, man of faith. Um, but essentially he said, hey guys, you know, we got oh, at least two weeks and uh, you know, we're up here in Montana, he basically said, you guys uh, feel free to um, take the work truck and go backpack. So he said, you can either go to Yellowstone or Glacial National Park. Um, you know, you guys decide between yourself where you guys want to go. If you guys are up to it, pack a bag, take a fuel card, you know, come back in a week. And uh, that was the coolest thing. We chose Glacier National Park, Montana. So I actually had the privilege of making snow angels in August on one of the seven to nine glaciers, I think that are left that you can actually access at that time. So they've been with global climate change and whatnot, they've been slowly disappearing. Um, but yeah, I could make snow angels. We backpacked, we had a chance to see, um, we had a chance to see uh, bears and goats and different things in the wild and we had to tie our food up type of deal just so they didn't eat it. And we slept under under the stars in a sleeping bag for, it was six nights, I, I wanna say, seven days and six nights. Really cool experience. Um, I had the privilege of doing on all of that entailed on the wheat harvest, uh, 15 turning 16 years old. So that was really cool. I'm grateful that I did that. And there was really no time to spend that money. So when I got home, um, actually I got home and I was just turning 16. So I had like $5,500 
in the course of a three month span, uh, minus the 500 I spent. So it was six grand, 55. And um, I actually bought my first car, what ended up being a really good deal was uh, my sister's um, Honda Accord, 2000 Honda Accord, which I did a lot of work to. And then through young and dumb experiences, was trying to show off and I, um, drifted it into the side of a pickup truck and that's a whole nother story for another video but yeah so that was once again one of them then I actually got got away with that one but yeah so I just encourage any of you guys who are going through some things or need to just go out and enjoy nature and find disconnect from the technological resources that we, uh, you know, in the world that we live in. I know that I'm holding a camera, so that's somewhat counterintuitive, but um, I'm basically talking about just the, the screen time that we all spend, you know, distracted by social media or, you know, things like maybe even this video, but at least there's good value and knowledge to be had is, is kind of my goal. Um, and if we go, that was, I believe, the last crossing. Um, there's a cabin down here. There might be one more, but that's kind of the turnaround point. If you go to the right, where we just saw back there, that would take you up out the pavement. And I'm pretty certain this takes us to pavement too. Heck, I've been talking, I can't even really, I don't even remember how many crossings we crossed, guys. So, yeah, I'll take you to the end of this road here, but essentially oh you know what there's actually another cool spot on the other side if you go through uh, it takes you to the train tracks and down by the Susquehanna River but we might do that so yeah I'm really grateful to have that experience came back bought my first car and then I started listening to Lil Wayne everyone knows what Lil Wayne was singing about in the mid to late 2000s and yeah essentially just I, I had my spell I did my fair share of drugs and all kinds of interesting things I guess you'd say things that I'm proud of things that I'm ashamed of and you know ultimately I had to go through that uh, that was just my journey and my path I had to I had to become a man through hardship and failure and successes and then I learned to try to move past the failures and just keep working on the successes. Um, I'm definitely not afraid of failing. I, I'm not saying, I mean, I enjoy failing in, in a certain aspect. I prefer to succeed, but when I fail, gratefully I have a good mindset on understanding that failure is just a part of succeeding. Um, all the best succeeders in this world have failed. Look at Thomas Edison, the name one. Um, you know, he basically said 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb until he found one way. So that's something, you know, we hear a lot. This has no outlet. So this is the opposing side to Fishing Creek Hollow Road. Um, and I'll see what has met, has or has not changed down here. So this is paved, but it does come to I, well, at one point was unpaved. There used to actually be three cabins up on the hillside over here to the left, um, which were really cool to just check out or metal detect and things like that. There was actually a house down there right where them them uh, leaves were and them trees looks like they planted. There used to be a two, two or three story house. Um, I guess it would be three stories if you counted the attic. But, yeah, so, Anyway, um, up on top of that hill, it was one, two, and three cabins. And then we used to go down in there and up this other side, they put the rocks there. Uh, a lot of people come to this particular location. I've seen people get in and out of kayaks here that are going on the river. So, um, I've seen them come out through that little hole there and then a pickup truck or something would back down to this wire right there. 
and pick them up. So it looks like we got people back here today doing some work. So we'll just turn her around and uh, that's that. So I appreciate you guys um, staying with me this long and I'm gonna go ahead and get myself out of here. Like, share, subscribe to the next journey. Peace.